Today we are painting rain, that moody, fun, reflection filled idea. And if you want to see how we can take these ideas, this feeling of rain, and really easily, with a couple of simple techniques, apply it to our page, to our sketches straight away, then you're in the right place. Let's get sketching. Hi guys, welcome to this video. This is another step-by-step -step video, but it's also got a couple of really interesting skills in it. So we've got a few different things to get through. And it's really exciting because it's about painting rain. And this is something someone asked me, um, I think last month now, and just finally got round to giving you all my thoughts about how to paint rain. Um, and if you're thinking, you know, painting rain, that sounds tedious and boring or incredibly hard, well, it isn't. Um, and the problem is, if we start trying to think, oh, we have to paint rain, like literally paint every raindrop, yeah, that sounds hard. But if we think about, you know, when we're out in the rain, or if we, even if we're just looking at a rainy photograph, what is the effect? What is happening in that scene which makes us recognise the rain? There's loads of things there to think about, but let's break it down really simply. So what we're going to do... First part, we're going to look at two really simple techniques to get reflections and to get that loose, watery feel of rain. Then we're going to take those skills directly into a clear, easy, four-step process to capture what looks like a complicated scene but really isn't when we break it down. If in any doubt, you can look in the chapters of this video and, and navigate to the bit that you're most interested in. Um, please let me know in the comments if you enjoy this kind of style and if you have any other ways that you'd like to suggest a rainy scene when you are out and about sketching. If you enjoy my stuff, please do check out my uh, website for all my courses, videos and everything. Um, but most importantly, um, stick with me here and we can have a lot of fun together on YouTube doing all sorts of different sketching and painting. So what supplies am I using for this rainy scene? Well, look, I'm going to be doing my exercises, my little practice things in my sketchbook, and I'm also going to be doing my finished scene in my sketchbook. And this is a 5.5 uh, by 5.5 inch sketchbook um, by Handmuller. Lovely cold pressed uh, watercolour paper inside. To go with that, I've got a, um, a fountain pen. It's a Twisby fountain pen. Uh, this is a Diamond uh, 580. Um, and I'm just getting used to this pen, so I'm going to do a little video about it um, shortly, check that out when it's finally published. But first, I'm getting used to it to see, you know, do I really like it? Do I recommend it? Um, and we'll, we'll explore that a little bit in this video. I've got a very cheap brush, it's just a size 10, any old round brush, because the idea is being loose and lively with our colours, we don't need a huge amount of control. Obviously with that, I've got a really big pot of water off to the side, um, and then I've got a little towel which is just um, more eco-friendly than using kitchen roll but kitchen roll of course is perfectly valid and then today um, I've got my little studio set of paints I say studio just because it's it's much bigger it's got my normal paints in there so we're using the normal colors and I'll talk you through the colors as I use them and that is everything you'll need so just to recap basically what you need is a pen with waterproof ink in paper um, paints and a, a brush and you are good to go and we've got this really fascinating image here it's from um, Unsplash and the link is down below and it's from Osterich um, and obviously it's a, a, a beautiful town with a, a lot of rain um, now there's obviously rain in the air but notice how you can't see it you can't see it in this photo we know it's there because a the ground is wet and there's people with umbrellas but we can't see it and I'll tell you now, you know, you can paint rain, you can paint rain, but um, if that's what you want to learn to do, I'm not your man, because that's not what I do. I paint the effect. I like to get the effect, the mood of rain. And what's the effect? Well, look at it. It's gloomy. It's um, got that dramatic sky and there's reflections and brightness all over the ground. So what we're doing, actually, is we're kind of going to invert our colours and also we're going to have things running together because so much of this is shadows from the sky running into the walls and colours and bright lights from the walls running down into the pavement. Now, before we jump in, I want to just show you how we might practically do that. So first things first, we've got, you know, let's just map out our scene really simply. 
This is great as well because it's going to act as a thumbnail sketch. So we can reference this in our heads at least when we come along and do our real sketch. You can see uh, we can just get these really big shapes just as a nice idea. There we go. Super simple. And then we've also got all these people in the middle here. And then up the side we've got this very steeply perspective street. So we've got our scene here. And what are the colours doing? Well, let's take some really loose colours. We'll take some indigo and we'll use that for our sky really quickly. Remember, this is just really loose. It's a practicing getting things running together. Now, if we squint, we'll see where's the darkest, the highest value areas. And we'll see, actually, for me, it's this. There's a rooftop here, which isn't quite included in my little thumbnail sketch. And then there's this area here. And then there's also this and this. All these people are probably where the the highest sort of value in this scene is. And then, broadly speaking, this side of the street also is really high value. So suddenly we've got a sort of area where we can start bringing shadows together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop in my colours and bring these shadows together and then start reflecting things down. And then we need to jump straight in and start adding that glow. And where's the glow? It's up here and here. This is a quinacridone gold, by the way. It's here and here. And then we'll change to another quinacridone sienna and we can get the glow that's coming elsewhere. But it's more than that. There's also some lovely reds. Let's drop those in. And suddenly, look, these loose colours are glowing and blending. Now, if we tilt our page bring down these colours, suddenly we're getting this feel that there is, you know, reflection and rain and glow. At least that's what this does for me. So this is our little thumbnail and our practice at, you know, are these colours the right colours? And yes, for me, these colours are the right colours. We've got indigo, we've got uh, quinacridone gold, quinacridone sienna, scarlet lake. And they are really, just those four colours are really capturing the effect of the scene. Now, textures are really important for this kind of feel. So something else I wanted to show you, another technique to help with getting that rainy, gloomy feel. If we just do a little block of colour here. So now by the power of uh, video editing, what I've got is four different uh, sort of areas, one very flat and four much more sort of a texture and an and interest filled and already that's getting the feel of a, a street to me a rainy street um but there's more to it than that because what we can do actually is we can come in and you know how often we will splash and we will splash color and that gives a lovely texture well actually what we want sometimes is these reflections these areas of light and we can get that by splashing water and just look how as we splash water into these colors suddenly we get all these these patterns, these pools of light spreading and pushing away. We could come, we could do that same thing on our, our scene. And look how it feels like rain. It feels like the splatter, the looseness, the, the texture you'd expect from rain because it's pushing, it's creating light, it's creating reflections. So look, here we go. This is our, our two techniques which we might want to use to enhance that moody, rainy feel. So step one, step one is to simplify, to simplify with shapes, to find our scene without the stress. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to start with our pen. Now look at this, It's it's got a really strong perspective and it's got a, a single point of perspective. So we can actually help ourselves out an awful lot by just popping in our, our vanishing point, which is off to the side. And very gently, we can just sketch in broadly, where are those where are those sort of hor horizontal lines going? And it don't worry, you know, being really gentle, but don't worry, they're going to disappear. They're going to disappear into the distance. We can then also sketch in, look at this um, this sort of boundary coming across. We can just find that one straight, straight away. We can just find some of the shapes associated with it. We've got this sort of pillar. We've got these windows going up. And then it becomes more straight. And within that, we've also got some lines of perspective, but we don't need to worry about that because we can treat this side of the image as something which is pushing the vision across. So we can leave it, for now at least, just as this really simple barrier pushing us across. And with that, with these simple lines, we are basically ready to go. And we can just start finding shapes. So 
we can't see much in this of the architecture but what we can see is people i'm actually going to leave the people till later because uh well for reasons which will become clear i hope but what we'll do we'll come across a little bit and we'll start by finding these distant shapes and all they are is basically squares they've got a square with a little hat on little sort of square hat then above it we're onto the this tower it's another square it's got a little triangle on top on top then it's got a sort of circle then it leads into the tower itself which is a square facing us with a circle and a triangle and then like a semicircle a semicircle and some sort of stacked shapes going up and look being really loose really gentle because that means we can come back and correct ourselves coming across we've got a square which kind of disappears behind here we can come back to our our main sort of uh, houses or buildings here and they're just a series of rectangles which are at slightly different heights now getting this exactly right isn't important just getting the idea is what we're after the idea of these higgledy piggledy up and down shapes as we get closer look this one's definitely much taller and you can see it comes across starts about here and it's much bigger going all the way across filling up most of the rest of our page but you'll notice how drawn onto this page so it means we can extend over we can push over and that i've learned from my thumbnail where i didn't quite extend far enough but i want to keep the scale here so we're going to extend onto the other page and look this is complicated isn't it or it's just a, a parallelogram with a triangle on top and suddenly we've got that complicated shape similarly here it's it, it feels complicated this roof but if we just draw it as a, a triangle with a square then we can bring it down and we've got the edge of this otherwise very complicated shape and already our scene is taking shape and now we can start adding in the people and why why have i waited well because we want to find that we know exactly where the horizon line of our image is the horizon line being where if we just pop in some of these uh, sort of shop fronts the horizon line will be just below the shop front because the horizon line is eye level or head level and so now that we know that and we can see clearly everything else is to scale we can pop in all our people's heads so we can just craft lots of heads and again they're very difficult to see so we don't need to be precise about it we can just pop in lots of suggestions of heads alongside we can now get our tram which is basically a square well a rectangle sorry it's a rectangle which then disappears off into the distance and then we can get our people in i've done a video um recently on simplification and what are people they are shapes shapes with little stick legs or shapes with shaped legs it doesn't really matter as long as they've got a, a circle and some shape for their body you've got a person and look we've got a crowd and it really is as simple as that and then the other key bit it's a rainy scene the other key bit is these umbrellas so let's give them these clear sort of shapes which suggest umbrellas and again it doesn't have to be clever just the idea and bring them down they can have handles and now look at this tangle it now looks like a crowd of people and it's really honestly it's that simple so we'll continue now with our, our shapes we've done the big shapes so we're now going to move to little shapes and little shapes i sort of started already it's things like the the shop fronts so we find that they're forming lots of rectangles for us we can find that there's actually another person here as well which is a, a shape can find a couple of the people out here as well just to start continue filling up the the space on this page and just keep moving along now here we've got different shapes we've got a really tall rectangle with a little person underneath as well well it's things it's difficult to work out what's going on here but there's definitely some rectangles of color and the same above here so we can just get these loose ideas these loose rectangles of color it's a bit more obvious at the top we've got rectangles which are pretty sure they're windows and we can just bring all of those in then in the middle we've got this kind of semicircle we've got this shape which is probably a statue little triangle and suddenly it's a complicated roof line but we didn't have to think about it as a complicated roof line we just draw on those key shapes and then we'll move on and just continue going into the back adding some of the key shapes we don't have to do everything remember we do not have to add every shape in so especially as we get further back it can be more effective to leave things to the imagination we'll put a bit more detail into 
this tower. And also remember, we'll, as part of our, our four steps, this is simplification. And we're going to come back later on top of our loose colours and add some more lines and add some more clarity to what's going on. So with that in mind, that is more than enough. That is absolutely more than enough to get us off to a good start. Now, on to step two. Step two is the loose colours. And this is where those effects that we practiced, these techniques we practiced, are going to come in. So I'm actually going to hold my sketchbook slightly angled. Now, if you're out and about sketching, just hold it like this and you angle it a little bit. Because I've got a, a desk in front of me, I'm going to hold it at a very slight angle, about a 10 to 15 degree angle. And that means we can move it and keep it agile, which is really important when we're doing these loose, watery techniques. I'm getting loads of indigo in my palette. Um, I'll move my palette across actually so you can see. There we go. So oh, it's a bit bigger than my normal one. Um, so it's a bit more difficult to get in, but there you go. That's my palette inside. Loads of water into this sky. And remember, we, we already worked out where the darkest areas are. So we're going to start with our indigo into those darkest areas. And we're confident that we're happy that when they run, actually they're gonna they're gonna look great so we don't need to worry like we might if we just went straight into this we don't need to worry that this sort of madness on the page is going to ruin things no it's gonna it's gonna add a huge amount of sort of powerful effect powerful mood and texture to our scene and we could just amp up some of the some of the pigment in a few places before swiftly like we did before swiftly moving on to our light colors so here's some quinacridone so you get some nice quinacridone gold. And where's that? The lightest glows are up here. And what I'm going to do now is put my page down so that the quinacridone goes up and down. So it glows into the sky, but also so it glow comes down into the street. Get things like the tram and get all under here as well. Now we've got a little bit more sort of ready warmth if we just put in some quinacridone sienna. So that's this colour here. Just drop that in a few places. Doesn't need to go everywhere either. And then what I found particularly effective in the last thumbnail actually was these reds. And the more I look, the more I see there's a pink house here and lots of reds coming out of that tram. And we can pop that in and then pop our page up again and start producing this lovely glow. And more quinacridone because look, between the reflections what we've got is lots of darkness, lots of darkness here. So now we've got the darkness, we've got the reflections, we've got it all going on, all just working with us, not against us. There's lots of negative space on our page. Um, that's okay for now, and it's okay forever actually. But what I do want to do is just add a little bit of a punch of blue in a couple of places, both into this sky, because just, just to lift it in a little way, and also perhaps just down here in a couple of places. And this is just because I love that effect. I love that blue glow coming forward. So look, now we've got this idea of reflection everywhere. Um, we can just start refining a couple of our colours perhaps. So for example, the whole front of this building is, is rather dark. So bring in some indigo and just let the whole front of this building come dark because actually what it's got is little slithers of light so we've got that effect much better now and then one thing which is definitely missing is look this this bit of the sky is not without tone so if we just drag down our our indigo suddenly we fill that up i like having this negative space I like having this and this negative space so i'm going to leave that for now and so that's our, our glowing technique now we can bring in our, our watery technique. Now what, you see, this is very, very watery at the moment. So if I splash in now, we'll get some lovely effects. But I'm then going to leave it a couple of minutes. So I'm going to leave this to dry for a couple of minutes. And we'll see how that changes. And whether actually we need to come back and do a bit more splashing when it's a little bit less wet. Because at the moment, I think what will happen, and I don't know, this is the amazing thing about watercolours, I think what's going to happen is because of so much water, things are going to blend and merge together and we'll lose that lovely effect from splashing in water. So here we are just a few minutes later and 
this is still step two because I just want to show you look we have lost a lot not all of our texture we lost it we've got it still here but we lost it in other places so I am going to go back and just pop in a few more splashes and hopefully that now that it's a bit drier those splashes will be enough just to really stand out at the end of note we could also splash in some light colors we could splash in these golds we could splash in some darks like we normally do and this is going to produce a range of effects and it might get very messy so this is why um, it's best to stick with adjusting it gently and seeing what happens but also it could look amazing so that is now the end of step two with those splashes done on a slightly dry page we've got the end of step two need to let this dry so we can come back with our pen add those details regain some structure and take it from there so we're back and on to step three you can see mostly dry some of these big pools of water have still got a little bit of wetness there but that's okay because what we're going to be doing is going back with our pen and redefining some structure perhaps adding some details but also also adding depth and darkness with some hatching in places so let's just start i'm going to start at the left of the image this time i'm going to be going around and refinding some of these details some of these shapes because they get they get lost in all this this dense loose color which is fine and actually we want it to be at loose we want it to have that feel that it, we're not quite sure what's going on like like in the rain when you are walking around you are sort of not seeing things as clearly and we want that feeling but we also want a little bit of clarity a little bit of uh, a little bit of our, our, our structure to come back so here we can start finding watercolour shapes, shapes which we made, or the watercolour made on their own. Um, and we can just start outlining those. And we can find these little patches of light, of, of yellow. We can find the bottom of the street. Now notice how the bottom of the street, again, because it, it reflects um, onto, onto the street itself. The bottom of the, the um, buildings reflect onto the street itself. Actually... If we're hatching what we want to do is we want to overlap our hatching a bit so that it's not clear so if we do it somewhere down here for example it's kind of it's not clear where the bottom begins where the where the road begins and where the house is because it isn't clear it's not in our in us in our actual reference it's not clear at all here we can start adding a bit more texture as well to suggest some of these windows we didn't add in before if we want we can also leave bits blank. So I'm going to try just leaving this one as, as still just blank space. There's little signs we can add in. All of this just adds to the noise, the suggestion of detail as we go back. Then our tram, you know what, I'd like to make a little feature out of the tram. So I am going to be a bit more careful, find a few more shapes, and perhaps even give it some tram lines to go down. And that's just filling some of this space as well. Out here we've got our nice sort of negative space of the, the main sort of tower building. We can add some of the windows in. And we can again redefine this. Because this is an important part of our sketch, isn't it? So we can redefine it. We can just make sure that we can come in and add a good sort of sense of being to this. Just by redefining some of these shapes. We can do an awful lot just by... Coming back with some more line work. Coming back, we can add in the rest of the street as it goes over these people. And then, you know, key part of this this area was how bold it was. So I'm going to increase the darkness with some simple hatching. Same, all these people can now come forward. And actually we can, again, use some simple hatching to just darken them, make them come towards us. This little outline, this edge of the street can now outline our colours. If we want, we can add a little bit of suggestion of some other stuff going on. But I would keep it really simple because we want it to push us across. We don't want it to hold attention too much. Now we've got some fun stuff. We've got these wires and are adding a lot of a lot of feel to our image. So how are we going to do all of these? Well, number one, I'm not going to do all of them because I think would be too much. I'm going to start with the ones which we can see going straight down the sky. And what we need to do, just have a little practice. This is how I like to do it anyway. A little practice of how they're going to flow and how they're going to float through the scene. And then we can just go for it. And remember, they're all going to be fitting vanishing points as well. Having done that one, we can join it up 
So we can bring in a line which joins and comes across, a line which joins and comes across. Remember, as they go back, they get closer and closer together. And maybe, is there room for one more? I'm not sure. I'm going to put these little bell-like things which are on it in a few places. You know, I actually think that's enough. There are a lot more wires, but it's busy already. It's already full of life. It's got loads going on, this sketch. So we don't need every detail. We don't need everything in there. So I'm going to leave that. And that is the end of step three. And we can move straight on to our final step. And our final step is our colours again. So if I move things over so you can see. And I'm going to just get some of these boldest colours. And we're going to do a little mix, a little bit of Cronacto, a little bit of our um, Cronacto Sienna as well, and a bit of our, our, our um, Scarlet Lake. And I'm not doing loads here. What I want to do is where we've got these boldest, boldest reds, these boldest golds, I want that to show. So we're just going to come in with a few dense areas of colour. A little bit of Cronacton gold now, which can create like an orangey colour alongside. Pop it in the windows here. And it's all lots of hard lines at the moment, isn't it? Lots of very definite lines. So we want to change that a bit. So I can come in with a cleaner brush and just soften in some of those edges. Not all of them, but some of these edges can soften. And then it's just enhancing that glow as we come down again, enhancing those that feeling of reflection. Some of this red again, just bring in and enhance the reflection. And a few little splashes perhaps as well. Now the last bit, the last bit I'm thinking about is these people. And again, we've done a lot of work on them, haven't we? And they're very dark. And we've mentioned this so many times. So I'm going to darken them up. I'm going to just come down with that indigo and really suggest them as points of darkness and they've also got lovely shadows reflecting towards us so again let's bring that in and they haven't really got highlights but I am going to just suggest by touching in some of our warm colours I'm going to suggest that there's more going on than just darkness a few splashes just to fill this with something a couple over here Maybe a little bit of that lovely blue, which is just in a couple of places. And we are done. That is my sketch complete. Don't forget to sign it um, so that you can you know, stay proud. It's, it's a lovely sketch. Whatever you've done, I'm sure there's something to love about it. Even when it goes terribly, terribly wrong, something magic will still have happened on the page, which you can learn from and, and take into the next sketch. So sign it. Feel happy. Um, let me know how it went. Let me know what you think of my version of a rainy scene. Does this fit with what you like doing? Does this fit with your vision of a rainy sketch? Or do you think there's better techniques or different ways of doing it? Of course, if you like my stuff, do like, subscribe. You can check out my website for all my courses and various links and different things going on. But most importantly, have fun, be creative, enjoy your sketching, and just don't be worried to experiment and be loose. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.